everyone. Welcome to Kelly's Creative Dream Studios. I am going to attempt to make at least one tag. Um, I laid down, after running around all day today, I laid down for a couple hours, and when I woke up, my allergies were through the roof. So, I was inspired by tags from Ori, and I will link her video down below. She is now one of uh, Maddie's design team members at Spectrum Art Creations and she made the most gorgeous Christmas tags with a tag base, acrylic paint, and ephemera. Now she had ephemera for one of the three kits from Stamperia. They have released three Christmas kits this year. Um, I am going to be using some of the ephemera from um, I'm thinking the letters to Santa kit from graphic 45 now this is the size of my tag and of course I didn't bring a ruler over here with me they're all over on the work table where I've been working all weekend here's one my tags measure three by roughly three by five but I only have about a three by four work area so I don't know if this is going to work or not we will see I need to plug in my heat gun which means there's going to be noise I don't need my heat gun or my glue gun plugged in so we can plug in the heat gun and I don't know where my uh, I'm a little lost over here today, can you tell? I don't see my foil clipboard for heat embossing. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it. Before I go anywhere, let's this is some of the pieces that I thought I could make work on this tag. And some of them are gonna be a little difficult. I'd have to trim them down. Not sure that's gonna work out. This one I could maybe make work. This one would work. One's for sure. I'm going to put them up here in the corner. <coughs> this one would work. Wouldn't that be pretty? And add something on the top of that. She did some beautiful layering with hers. See, that one's going to be too wide. I'd lose part of Santa unless I want him to hang off the tag. And I'm not sure I really want to do that. But this Santa would work. And this would work. <coughs> so I have those that would work. Let me get a drink here. <laughs> Left my water on the other table. Hang on. I don't know where these allergies came from today. But I know they are driving me absolutely insane tonight. <coughs> so let's see if we can get through this video today. The reason I have to get it done tonight, it's Tuesday, it's Monday night, is because it has to go up this morning, Tuesday. Um, and I have to upload it before, um, before 8 a.m. So tonight is the only option I have. So let's start by painting a base here. <coughs> And I like the fact that she mentioned she didn't worry about streaks. She wasn't too she wasn't too concerned about any streaks or anything that she would get. <coughs> Sorry. And she started with a gray. Now that really threw me, but she started with a gray. And I don't think I'm gonna like this brush. So we'll lay it off to the side, see if we can't find a better brush over here. Let's try this one. This one might have a little bit more oomph to it. I I'm going to need a whole lot more gray paint. Now, of course, the only gray I have is a gray metallic. Now, I like folk art paints. They're not as highly pigmented as some, but they're a good, smooth paint to work with. And so, I'm not going to get all the gray that she did with this metallic, I don't think, but... What it does is it kind of creates a night vintage. And I'm going to move this because I'm going to get it everywhere, as you can tell. It creates a nice night vintage look. 
but because it's a metallic, it's not as pigmented as an actual gray would be. It's more of a silver. And she just kind of got some of this gray in place. And then she went back and she came back in with the white. And I thought that was just the coolest thing. I'd have never thought to do that. And that's one of the reasons that we watch other videos so we can be inspired by what other people are doing because everybody looks at things differently. Let's see, now that has, well, you know that gray is under there and it helped cover up that cream color of that folder, file folder that my tag was cut from. It has a nice wintry gray to it and I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these other two really quick and then I'll hit them with the heat gun and dry them all. Um, tomorrow, while I'm painting this and not sitting here doing absolutely nothing in a silent screen, um, tomorrow is our first uh, technique in the color challenge. No, I take that back. Tomorrow is only Wednesday. Tomorrow you will have not one but two very short haul videos. One is from Spectrum Arts. And, I, I mean, these are both very, very small haul videos. I've been trying to be cautious about my money. Um, I need to get stuff in the shop. I need to get my books written so that I can get some income coming in and Bob can retire. Because I am so ready for him to be done driving back and forth to work. Even though on this trip he's only two hours away, I'm just, I'm done. I like having him home. Uh, this last time when I told him, I, you know, I didn't want to have to pay any attention to house stuff. I just wanted to work on the studio. And I tell you, boy, he just jumped right in. I didn't have to tend to any of the animals, including the hummingbirds, the dogs, the cats, dog, uh, the cat, nothing. Um, most of the time he did the cooking. Even if I did the cooking, he still did the dishes. It was really nice, and I was very spoiled. <clears throat> I am very blessed. I realize this. So, um, I'm trying to get stuff done. Now that I can get to the work table, um, I've been posting stuff to Instagram that I have finished, posting stuff to my Facebook group already, and this is the first week I'm back to work since I took the time off to actually work on the studio. This is my first week back to work. And I've already been able to get so much accomplished just because the work table is cleared off. Um, it's not going to go back into place until, everything's not gonna go back into place until after the first week of October when my sister and nephew have come to house sit for me while I'm at Cassie's wedding. So, and my daughter is supposed to come visit for our birthday the end of September, uh, we share a birthday. So it's going to be, there's no sense folding up the hide of bed, putting everything in place, only to turn around in a couple of weeks and have to pull it all back out and start all over. So um, the work table is going to stay where it's at. And I'm going to make use of that hide of bed being pulled out and having that large space to finally get my stamps cataloged and have all my dies and know what I have to work with. I'm so excited. Okay, we have these. This almost needs another coat of white. That uh, tag really soaked that up, didn't it? So let's get paint on here and get it dry before it all soaks in. Run this over here really quick. Um, I don't know why that tag really soaked it up as much as the other ones did not. Let me get me a baby wipe here <clears throat> and get the paint off my hands before I touch anything. I thought maybe if I stood up and grabbed that, I'd see where my <laughs> embossing thing was at. Oh, ha, I found it. Not exactly where I would have thought to put it, but... I had to move it out of the way to get to something the other day. And lo and behold, there it was. So I'm just going to clip this right under there, grab my heat gun, and let's make some noise, shall we? <clears throat> you know, it always concerns me when people apologize for turning on the heat gun and making noise. 
Folks, it's a craft channel. You know how this works. And I'm trying to keep the foil out from underneath here. Oh, look at that. It's drying that and it's giving it a barn weathered cracking look. Isn't that cool? And that is not a crackle paint. Wow, I love that. So let's set that one aside. Look at that. And that's not a crackle paint. How cool. Folk art wicker white acrylic. That is way cool. I love that. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm probably going to have time to put one of these tags together because we're at the two minute mark already. But while this paint is wet and I know I'm getting that, that cracking, I want to go ahead and hit these with the air dry, with the heat gun. You see, I got my finger in that one. I'll probably wind up touching it up. But watch how that's cracking. That is so freaking cool. Get out your toys and play, folks. You'll never know what's going to happen until you do. Okay, let's pull the other one in here and get it cracking. And then I'm going to take one of them and really dry it really, really good so we can put it together. And I'm going to hold this out of the light because I know that light is reflecting on that foil really good. So... You know, fun I use crackle paint on these tags. Getting that weathered barn crack look. That is so cool. <clears throat> Almost re-energizes me for tonight. Almost. Watch how that's cracking apart. You can see the gray coming through. It's like my ephemera is going to be hung on the side of a barn. And I'm going to finish drying this one all the way so that I have it to work with. And now that I have that started, I'll press it down. Paint takes a little bit to dry. It's not like an embossing powder or anything. It takes it a little bit. And I've got a little more white than the gray. Uh, you'll see in Ori's, her, more of her gray came through, but that's okay. This is still going to look really super cool. Really super cool. I just want to make sure this is really, really dry because I'm going to be gluing the ephemera to it or sticking it to it with double-sided tape. So I want to make sure that it's, um, that it's good and dry. Now, I'm not going to punch holes in the tops because I may come back and do a ribbon punch um, or a piece of Christmas fabric on the top. <coughs> okay, I think that's going to be good for now. I'll finish drying those others later. I think that's going to be good. Whoa, that got toasty. Okay, and we'll hang that back up where it belongs. Okay, so we have this tag. Whoa. I'm going to try and press it down a little bit and give it... See, I'm going to wind up <coughs> covering the back of this tag because I've got the paint on the back from my fingers. But that's okay. I'll just cut a piece of white um, or a cream-colored paper to go on the back. Now I'm going to move this just like that. Get that gray paint off of there so I don't wipe, wind up with it on there. So now let's see what we're doing with this. I have lots of little bitty pieces here, as you can see. And I'm going to put the snowflakes over here because I have an idea if I use those, I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to be putting them on with dimensionals. <coughs> I really like this one. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I really like it. Now there was a letter to Santa here, and I thought this would be cool on here. But not to glue it down completely, but to leave it as a pocket and then tuck those letters in there. I thought that was a cool idea. So let's go ahead. That's one option. And then I had, remember we had these bigger pieces here. We could put Santa on there. And...
let's take and trim this off. One of the things I want to do is get my carousel done. I think we could put this up here to, to that. We could do that. That's an option. So there's two. And then there was Santa's workshop as a focal point. Too much holly. Too much holly. But um, I like that one. I really like this. I really like this a lot. And we could bring this in. I'm trying to do this with my fingers is always interesting. Let's go with this one. We are down to 16 minutes on this video. So let's go ahead and glue this one in place. Just the way it is. But <clears throat> I'm going to stack those two together. I'll wind up finishing those other two tags. Let's come back here. I'm trying to get to where this is going to be in the picture for you. Take my lid off my distress. And I don't think I want the big one. I think I want to use my finger dauber. And come back in with my walnut stain. And just give this cherry cobbler red a little bit more definition. I know that was coloring. Yep, it was coloring. It just didn't show it. <laughs> it just didn't show it. So let's put that back in place. Move this out of the way. And then we can go ahead and glue this one down. Did I not bring glue with me? Yes, I did. <laughs> Wasn't sure. So see, even with a simple packet, packet of ephemera, you can do so much. In fact, I'm going to use some of these bigger pieces, and I think that's going to be our card Monday uh, in two weeks. Monday, we are back in here with another memory decks. And I'm not going to do another Christmas one this time around, because that was all about July. I have an envelope that I'm going to show you for the memory decks. And I'm going to put him right there. I think that wrought iron look against this, this barn siding just came out so cool. Now, do I want to add a snowflake? Or do I want the holly? Hmm. I've got another one of those hollies right here. Is the holly too much, do you think? I think I like it with this holly. I don't know if I like it with the holly on the top, but I do like it down here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one in place. And then this one, let's put a dimensional behind this one. Whoops, that's not the dimensional pack I want. This is the dimensional pack I want. And I know in here I've got some big ones. And I'm going to add just a little bit of dop of glue on there to make sure it stays. And let's put that right there. There. I don't want to cover up the 25, the December 25th right there, what I'm trying to avoid. So there is one of three tags that I will have, and I will show you the three completed ones on Friday during our premiere. So in the meantime, get out your ephemera, get out some tag bases, get out your acrylic paints, and have some fun. <clears throat> and I will see you back here tomorrow. For the two haul videos, Thursday for our first color challenge project, and then Friday for our premiere. In the meantime, remember to like, share, subscribe, and create a blessings.